I thought I'd try out some Iron Man effects. Specifically the Iron Man repulsor jets that Tony Stark uses to fly. Here's the shot we're going to be taking a look at. Now, there's kind of a funny story around this in that we actually shot this stuff way back in 2009. With the Avengers breaking box office records all over the place, I thought I'd dig it out and have a look. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on in this shot. I'm not going to tell you step by step exactly what settings to use, but I will go into all the techniques so you know how to put together something similar yourself. First up, there's the actor, who is shot on a green screen. He pretended that he was flying around while the camera tracked left and right. The idea of this camera move was to get the correct perspective shift, rather than animating it entirely in post. We did try doing some wire work, but, well, it didn't work out. After keying out the actor, I used a slightly unusual method to mask out the rest of the unwanted parts of the shot. It's easy to apply a square mask to the layer to get rid of everything behind the green screen, but the problem is that due to the moving camera, I would have needed to keyframe the position of the mask throughout the shot. Now, it's really hot here in the UK at the moment, and I simply couldn't face faffing about with keyframe animation. So instead, I drew the mask on a separate plane layer, tracked the camera movement, and then used that track to animate the plane automatically, ensuring that the plane mask stays in the right place throughout. A quick set mat effect then applied the plane's alpha data to the green screen layer, and I was done, no animation required. A few other tricks were used to improve the realism of the composite. Spill removal got rid of the green reflected from the green screen, and a combination of levels, HSL and color temperature blended him into the background better, and then a light wrap effect was used to have some of the background light spill onto the actor. A couple of shadow layers were added, simple planes which were masked and then blurred, and the entire actor was duplicated and flipped to create a reflection layer in the annoyingly shiny floor. Next up it was time for the fun stuff, the repulsors. These were made up of a mixture of light flares and particle effects. The first thing was to do lots more tracking, so that I had the position of the actor's feet, hands and chest. As you can see, tracking was a big time saver in this project. Some were simpler tracks than others. The center power source was really easy, for example. For the hands and feet, meanwhile, I used two point trackers so that I could also track the rotation. I found that by tracking the hands and the elbows, I could get good results, for example. Once all these tracks were made, the data was then applied to point layers. It's usually best to apply the data to a point layer rather than directly to an effect as you can then reuse that point for multiple layers. So here you can see those points in place on the actor. The power source was a simple anamorphic streak effect with some customization. It helped that it was being placed over a real light source, as it occasionally flares out depending on its angle to the camera. As usual, a mixture of practical and CG tends to work better than going all CG. For the repulsors on the hands and feet, I used the rather more exciting digital blocks flare, again heavily customized to give a particular look. The repulsor jets were custom particle simulations. They were set up so that the emitters linked to the tracked hands and the trajectories were set to cone. After that, it was mostly a case of keeping the life setting nice and low and adjusting the lifetime properties so that the smoke fades out quickly. The scale was also set to start off small and then get larger, giving the impression that it was emitting from the small palm repulsors then dispersing in the air. The repulsors on the boots were duplicates of the same effect, and you set up to use larger particles and have far more particles that lasted longer. I also added a floor plane and set up the particle simulation to use it as a deflector, so that the smoke impacts on the floor and then spreads out. The combination of tracked boots and floor deflector makes this kind of effect incredibly easy to set up in HitFilm Ultimate. An alternative particle simulator was also added to the boots, with much larger and darker smoke particles, which looks more like dust being kicked up off the floor. The final particle simulation was for the sparks. Using the same tracking points and floor deflector, the sparks were achieved by using a long, thin texture and using the Align to Motion option in the appearance settings. This automatically rotates the texture in 3D based on its movement, which is perfect for creating a shower of sparks. The last few steps for the shot were to grade the background to look a bit more like Tony Stark's lab in the first Iron Man film, and then an overall grade to the whole thing to sharpen it up and give it some more contrast.